So for a person who doesn't understand what's happening in Southern Africa, well, this is happening. For years and years, during every election in Zimbabwe, they had regional bodies like African Union, EU, obviously you know what EU is. And then we have what they call the Southern African Development Community called SADC, which is a group of 16 member states in Zimbabwe being one of them. And since every election, they have always been sending a delegation of people to go and have what they call the International Observers Program, which sets to see how the elections, if the grounds are fair or not, you know, the preconditions to an election. But however, since the first election of Zimbabwe, SADC was just a group of buddies and you know why. Before I continue, please subscribe and follow my content. This would help us to reach more people. So after the fight for independence from Western countries, most leaders who were in Southern Africa were comrades in arms. They used to establish bases in each other's territories and at some point in time, these places used to be one federation. So after fighting the wars, the bond and the bromance became even stronger. And the founding fathers were obviously Julius Nyerere of um, Tanzania. We had Samora Machel of Mozambique, Robert Mugabe, of course, of Zimbabwe, Jose Eduardo dos Santos of Angola, Se Ketemile Masire of Botswana and leaders of Eswatini, Lesotho and Malawi. Hence, these were revolutionary founding fathers because they fought in the trenches against the white minority. And together, they might be also having a skeptical means of dealing with people outside the grouping because in those days France was busy toppling leaders from their presidential seats in Africa hence skepticism of oppositions grew in Africa and especially in Southern Africa hence the only way they could guard their presidents and their freedom and sovereignty was to not allow opposition parties anywhere near power this is what happened in Africa Remember, if you're friends, for example, and you are just two, when a new girl comes in, you know that feeling where you're trying to, you know, give a shoulder to the other one so that they can't be close to you. You can't trust them. That's exactly how it used to be. Hence, we had certain political parties that maintained the sanctity of the revolutionary parties. They didn't want to leave power, especially countries like Zimbabwe. They always had one party within their governance because they were afraid to be toppled and they use this all oh, western influence agenda whatever that comes into play whenever elections are put in place now here's the fun part for a while after holding the ground for some reason the love circle broke and it started in malawi and then zambia followed now this is the part when we say nothing lasts forever on the 28th of June 2020, Lazarus Chikwera of Malawi became a president that removed a ruling party. And this was a new phenomenon in Southern Africa. Hence, the brotherhood on the other side felt like that was a bit unusual. But, well, there are chance occurrences here and there, so they couldn't feel any threatened. But before the brotherhood even rested from Chikwera, another guy came called Hika in the Hichilema of Zambia, who also removed the sitting president called Edgar Lungu from Zambia on the 24th of August 2021. Now this is when the Southern African region realized that indeed political outfits are not forever and invincible as well. Now today Zimbabwe has faced a serious backlash from the chairperson of the Troika who is the same guy who came after the first, the Hikai and the Hichilema from Zambia. And well, it's not him directly, but the representative from his country, which then means for some reason, the diplomatic position of Hikai and the is the one that is being represented by the person who came to observe the elections. And for the benefit of others, you have to know that the Troika is responsible for promoting peace and security in the Sadak region. So the mandate of it is to steer um, the direction regarding matters that threaten peace and security, you know, yada yada. And the biggest question that we have is, is there a threat to peace in Zimbabwe? I think yes. How can you not have a conflict when you have millions and millions of people starving in your country? You have youths that occupy 70% of your demographics 
unemployed. How can you not have a war or a civil war in your country when widows and orphans are increasing daily because you exchanged the value of their money of you know late fathers, the pensioners, with paper called the Zim dollar? How can they not be angry when you subject your people through torture every time they try to voice out? They want to express themselves. But the Zimbabwean thieves, sorry, I mean, the Zimbabwean government has issued a presser saying, Now, coming to the SADC principles, we want to make it very clear. They are a product of the member states of SADC. They are not administered by a particular individual who may become the head of a delegation. He is responsibility. So we hear of a certain head of the delegation from a certain country of the SADC mission. Without prior consultation with his colleagues, fellow observer missions from sovereign states, and without them even having given reports back to their countries, even gone back to their secretariat, because the secretariat is the collective secretariat of SADAC. He decides to delve into matters which have nothing to do with his mandate. SADAC has got several committees which deal with various issues of SADAC, of Southern Africa development. It even has a constitutional review committee within its ambit. If anybody has got issues about the Zimbabwe laws, that is the relevant body within SADAC to come and question the statutes of the sovereign state of Zimbabwe. On a peer-to-peer -peer basis, as fellow accedes to, a, to the SADAC protocol of unit, of, of, of cooperation, it is not the duty of a particular individual to arrogate to himself the role of a constitutional review committee of the laws of Zimbabwe. So, Mr. Nevers Mumba from Zambia, we call you to order. Uh, don't delve into the laws of Zimbabwe. If you've got issues with those, tell your relevant institutions, not the SADAC Observer Committee, your relevant institutions, to take it up with the SADAC Secretariat in Zambia. Otherwise, we know that he is a preacher, he comes here, he has got his friends, and he was seen hobnobbing and accosting himself with the triple C. We don't think that's what Zambia stands about. He even goes further to try to make an issue about civic organizations and chooses some against the other in Zimbabwe. He favors Zesin and others. Then he castigates Faz on the other hand. This is a bias. You know how funny it is when you try to downplay the will of the people because clearly you have rigged the election. And tell me if these figures are real to you. It's quite clear that the ZANU-PF government is out of ideas because I think Mugabe was, was quite smart when it comes to rigging. You know, Mugabe was beyond rigging he was the main mechanism of rigging he could not be detected he would rig an election and you won't even complain because it seemed so real but this guy this guy i think there's something really wrong with his political antics for now please don't forget to subscribe and like our videos also comment so that we can trick the algorithm to follow more people see ya